Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. Thank you so much for inviting me today into your browser tab. As is unusual for me, there are no technical difficulties because I've wisened up and the thing is that I pretended to myself that I would go live at uh, 8.30 here, uh, which means that I was had everything in order by 8.50. So there were still 10 minutes to go on which I just watched some more The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. And this is actually what I want to do today. Just do a little bit of live painting. I'm not a renowned artist in any way, but I think I, I know enough to, to make uh, at least an interesting little stream. Um, first things first, uh, yes, I'm still working on the Ludum Tara documentary, as always, but I will also have a video coming out uh, this week. Also got something on my phone there. Oh, look at, look at that. YouTube just told me that I'm live, so thank you, YouTube. Very, very helpful. Stupid. Anyway. Um, yes, we are here and do a little bit of painting and I will show you my techniques in Photoshop uh, because yeah, I, I think it, it there might be uh, one or two things that are not well known when doing digital paintings in Photoshop and this is just how I do things as always and want to share with you my process. Okay, so where's where's my brush? Oh, right there. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, be sure to eat up your titanium white, say hello to the little trees and I welcome you to the pain of painting. So let's switch over to our canvas. This isn't the canvas, that's me again. <laughs> okay, so we still have some kind of technical difficulties. Let's have a look at the chat first. Hello, Phil. It, what? It works? Yes, it works. <laughs> uh, fourth year of production for that doc, or is it five already? No, no, it's, it's just it's just a one year. It's 12 months since my Ludum Dara thing has been in production. And no, I end inside because I'm a hopeless perfectionist. And I think, I think, yeah, I, I, I ought to change something. But still, at least I got another video coming. So, so that's good. That's good. Okay, let's let's try switching again. Yes, this looks like Photoshop. <laughs> so yes, I had a, a very stressful week, and I thought uh, today we do just some some very nice little painting together. So um, I've watched a little bit of Bob Ross, and from what I've learned is that uh, uh, we don't make accidents. But uh, with me we probably will <laughs> so yeah of course yeah um to show you i i, I wanted to show you uh, what what style we're going to paint to paint today and my inspirations so i have here some of my artworks this year uh, this uh, i drew uh, all on my phone because it's one of those nifty galaxy thingies and it has this little stylus on it and it's surprisingly workable. So um, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun <laughs> just, just doodling on my phone. So yeah, this was the first painting that I made on my phone. It's, it's kind of creepy, I think, I hope, well, I hope so. And yeah, just, just a little bit evocative because this is what I like. You probably, you know, from my uh, text-based games, I like it to be a little bit on the creepy, mysterious side. Yeah, this was another thing. Um, what I also like is to keep things pretty vague and pretty dark and also cars because I, as a pastime, I just like to drive around and, and look at the scenery and find new shortcuts. <laughs> and this is, uh, yeah, what, what when I'm driving around, this is what I mostly see. Not a lot and maybe just some, some red headlights. And yeah, also sometimes you drive around in the snow <laughs> and you uh, you think you see some weird stuff just, just for half a second. You're not quite sure what it is and this is quite inspirational. Oh look, can you hear this? This is a happy little plane. It's a happy little plane. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what this is, but if it gives you some kind of inspiration for anything and you think you know what it is, it probably is that what you think it is because I have no idea what it is. Yeah, and this was my uh, last painting that I did and like I said, I did them all on the phone just 
to unwind a little bit and have half an hour or, or quarter of an hour just nothing to do but look at, <laughs> at my uh, uh, scrawly paintings. And what I don't like about the phone painting is that the UI, always your brushes and all your tools constantly get, get in the way. And this is why I thought, yeah, let's, let's do something uh, on the computer. Oh yeah, of course, today's drink is water again, because I didn't drink enough this week, so I have to catch up. Um, plan B is just going headfirst into a pool and then just drinking until I'm on dry land again. Okay, so uh, yeah, welcome again to the stream and I think it's time for us to get started. Uh, unlike Bob Ross, I don't have a, a white canvas that's primed with uh, a wet acrylic paint, but instead we're here in Photoshop and um, as for the dimensions, I hope you can see it, probably not. It's uh, 2000 by 3500 pixels and uh, important, the color mode is RGB, of course, in 16 bits per pixel because with 8 bit, oh yeah, okay, I made a new canvas, great. Yeah, with 16 bits per pixel because you really need this additional color definition, especially since I will probably draw something dark. I have no idea what I'm going to paint. But uh, yeah, things uh, are pretty dark because um, this is in, in case you take notes. Now uh, put your pencils down. First tip is if you can't draw it, just leave it in the shadows. And this is probably why my images or my paintings are always very, very dark. <laughs> okay, so let's start and give our canvas there some kind of background. I, like I said, I don't know what I will paint, but I usually start with just some sky and maybe some clouds and see how things work out from there. Okay, I don't want it to be completely black, but um, maybe a little bit green, greenish, cyan colored, something something along this. Uh, it's, it's just still too blue, maybe. Maybe something like this, but darker, yeah probably like this. I can't go too dark, of course, so that you won't see anything and also that I don't see what I'm painting because the lights are okay. The lights are pretty strong and it's it's not good advice to point at the lights and then look straight into them when you just want to refer to the lights. Um, oh, right. Another thing that I uh, wanted to share with you was uh, what's my usually my inspiration for these kinds of drawings. And it's uh, the artist, uh, uh, Swedish artist Simon Stollenhag. You might have heard of him. This is his website. And this is one of those websites where you just want to keep scrolling, keep scrolling because it's just so evocative and, and great what, what he paints. It's, it's not very detailed, but it looks, yeah, it, it just draws you in. It looks like a, a lot like his Instagram account, uh, especially in terms of, of the colors. You also have those bluish tinged shadows there. And like I said, it's, it's not very detailed when you look at it closely, as you can see here with the enlargements, but overall it, it just works so perfectly that you really get some kind of sense and feeling there. So if you haven't heard of him, uh, Simon Stollenhag, let me show you, there's his red bubble page. I can buy prints. Yeah, and this is how to write his name. It's Simon and this ST, and then there's this A with a circle on it, L. E N H A G, and yeah, the, I, I got his first book. It, uh, nowadays, there are of course uh, uh, translations to his books, or I think I'm not quite sure if he writes in English now. But it's, a lot of paintings are in there. First book I got is still Swedish, and he helped me via Twitter to order it from his Swedish web so shop. So yeah, I still don't know what's what's the story behind all of this. And frankly, I think I like it actually better than understanding <laughs> the Swedish in the books. Maybe just just a word here or there, and and just from the overall um, yeah appearance of the text and yeah, just where is a lot of text and oh this looks to be like some kind of in lore memo of something you never know and this is yeah this is what, what i really like about it is your imagination has a lot of room uh, to to fill in the blanks so this is why i like to do my paintings pretty <laughs> dark okay so let's make a new layer there just switch over my tools and 
here we are good okay so as for the sky um what Usually I, I, I don't like it to be, of course, daylight is way too bright. You can't really have some dark shadows there. For me, it's always the question is how far into the night do you want your painting to be? And for me, I would say it's just where it's, there's just a hint of dusk still there, a little bit of red maybe. And is this the right paint? No, just a little bit of red maybe and, and already you, you still have some wispy clouds, but they don't read as clouds anymore. They're just, just black and dark. I think I want something, something along those lines. Okay, the next thing when you're in Photoshop is there's this huge uh, discussion about what brushes to use. Some people say, yeah, they have this immense array of thousands of brushes they accumulated over the years. Others say just the default plain sorry default brush is enough and as for me it's it's kind of a mixture i've got a couple of brushes that i regularly use but some brushes are as you can see here in the lower um what's it that's the lower right this is the right hand on your screen i think yeah of course it's you see the same images i, I was just thinking in mirror images there <laughs> So I have different brushes for different projects. For example, if you know my game Fine Sweeper, everything was drawn with just um, these two brushes there. And uh, it, it makes things coherent. So this is another tip to write down is limit your brushes for a certain project. You want a broad brush, maybe something yeah, where you can do some kind of, uh, of uh, color washes or gradients and something fine to, to have the details and maybe a third brush for anything that's in between. This is will be your probably your work brush. And sometimes you just need all the brushes you can get. And interestingly, <laughs> in a nice brush that I have, where do I have it? I stole <laughs> from Blizzard. Um, where is it? Rough Pastel? No, there it is. It's called Overwatch. Let me just show you quickly. And it's this brush shape here. Probably you can't see it. Let's let's zoom in a little. It's this brush shape here. And how did I steal it? <laughs> there was this uh, one GDC talk on the art of Blizzard and they just showed their brush there. And I took a screenshot, mm, tweaked it a little bit. And now I have this Overwatch brush here. I don't know if they have the same settings on their brush. It's just that maybe the artistry and <laughs> yeah, sheer image of Blizzard will rub off of when stealing their brush onto my images. And fun thing is I've never used it for anything. I just have it there and always look at it and think, huh, does this project warrant a real Blizzard brush? And no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So, okay, back now to our painting here. And uh, we're still here uh, at the problem of the, of the dusk. You know what? I, I think now the background is still too too bright. I will darken it down even further so that you can barely see it, and maybe take down the saturation as well. So okay, so now it's it's really it's really dark. Um, do you want me to change uh, the background color to something that's black, or is dark gray fine for you? Because for me, I'm, I'm not quite sure now with when it's dark gray that I can probably uh, properly assess how bright something is. But but I think I think we will we, we'll be good for for now. Okay, so again, the sky. I pick a brush here. I have my charcoal brushes, and just to show you the brush here, this one is a very soft brush. So uh, I will just uh, make it real huge like this. Yeah, this looks good and just yeah start filling in the sky or the rest of the sky that i want to be still have some kind of color since this is photoshop you can always go back and this is how i start here just from the top make a very light gradient there like this just have my hand barely touch the the the, the tip of the stylus barely touch the tablet so just to get some kind of gradient there Good. It's probably still too bright, but we will get to this. Uh, I, I keep making it darker here so that that we are already there in the very last stages of the dusk uh, stage. Yeah, and make it even go darker here. So I, I think I like this so far, but of course I want to have some feeling of of dusk. So how about 
making, uh, giving it a little bit of orange or red, or just something that hints at yeah the sun has set quite long ago, but not too recently. Yeah, just again, just a little bit there. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> my, again, uh, I'm very, very lightly touching the tablet here, and I think this is still too strong. But uh, yeah, we can reduce the opacity later. So maybe, maybe even more, uh, even a bit redder, reddisher? No, reddish. <laughs> it's not reddish. Maybe something along along this here. Yeah, I, I I like this. Still too bright, of course. Still too intense. But I like this that you have some kind of yeah feeling of of the sun sun that has has vanished. So I turn down now here the opacity of this layer and I think this is the background I want to go with. So as you can see it's really a very soft brush and I'm just trying things out and now I can combine those two layers there because I don't think I will be touching them ever again now. Let's call this BG and have a look at the chat if I've lost uh, all of you. Oh look at this 13 concurrent viewers. Oh my god this is so many. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, don't forget to beat the shit out of the brush. Oh, we're not beating the shit out of the brush, we're beating the devil out of the brush. I think he's gone now. Good. Okay, so um, let's make some happy little clouds. No, we won't. In my universe, we make some terrified clouds that are living in constant fear and agony of the things that they see. So I pick uh, uh, something here from, from the uh, bottom half of, of, of my canvas and zoom in a little bit and we'll try to make some wispy clouds there. And yeah, this brush won't cut it anymore. This is too soft now. So I have here another charcoal brush that looks like this. Will I use this or will I use something even more defined like one of my pencil brushes, something like this? You know what, let's let's go with a, a, a rough pastel brush that looks like this. No, you know what, I will go with my fine sweeper brush that looks like this and then just, just uh, work on the silhouette. Okay, so you know what, I still don't, if, if, if the background is even darker, <laughs> I always go darker. Let's just try it out how, how it looks. And I think this is a bit more menacing if it's even darker. Because I want the, the clouds to have the same color as the background, essentially that they are not there. Okay, so let's do some clouds. Another thing is, of course, you want to define where your horizon is first. So maybe my horizon is here because this is where the sun has set. I think, yeah, this should be the horizon. And now as for wrong color, now as for the clouds, I'm just very lightly just increasing my brush size here and just drawing in some clouds like this. I want some, some looming, oh man, this is brush is way too large. <laughs> I want some looming clouds over everything. And uh, my brush is not 100% uh, uh, opaque, but I think it's 80, 73, it says. Make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's, it's still, for now, it's still very, it, it still looks very dirty, but we're not finished yet. So those are just a, 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 a wall of clouds that's stretching towards the horizon and getting thicker on the horizon or maybe what we could do is maybe leave just a little bit on the horizon and have uh, some light bounce from the uh, ground up towards the clouds but you know what no no I like I like how they are okay so and now we are starting with something that Bob Ross doesn't have it's the eraser <laughs> to make things a little bit a little bit cleaner here and to undo our mistakes because we make horrible horrible mistakes there is no such thing as a happy accident it's you only make mistakes okay my brush now I squeeze it a little if I manage to do this there like so even further and but why is it like this yeah so 
Oh, of course, yeah, this doesn't work with this brush. <laughs> I want a very, very flat uh, brush that I can uh, make it easier the, the clouds to draw in the at the horizon line. Maybe I just use a, a default brush, not this one, but yeah, this good old Photoshop brush and just squeeze it like this and that's too large. <laughs> like so that yeah this looks good that i can uh, draw that that the clouds at the horizon line so let's let's undo them aren't too blobby or too big as they are now but yeah of course still the silhouette is not finished there you know what let's let's increase where is my brush let's increase the opacity to a 100% and then just go from there so those are my clouds stretching towards the horizon. And I will probably have some more up top here. Okay, so they are still too harsh, too hard uh, in their contours, but we are still working on this. Cool. Um, the reason why I wasn't using a complete 100% uh, opacity is that a little bit of the sky shines through and looks like, yeah, there's just some more definition in the clouds uh, going on. Okay, dark coastline I can see in the chat. You know what we could maybe do for a dark coastline? Maybe, yeah, interestingly, this looks a little bit like you're watching from a cliff down and this is the sea here in front, uh, maybe reflecting the sky. Interesting. Yeah, like I said, I, I really like if you can see much more <laughs> in a painting than actually is there. I made something here and I don't know how I did this. This is a marker and I don't know how I set some kind of mark there. It's only distracting and I have no idea how to get, get rid of this. Is it a measurement tool? Is it a, huh? I have no idea how I just did this there. I will try to ignore it, but yeah. <laughs> if anyone knows what this little marker dot symbol is with a one next to it, I think it has to be some kind of Photoshop measurement tools. Okay, good, good. It, it vanished. Uh, apparently it was just for um, the layer. Good, good, things are back. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, let's let's make let's give the clouds a little bit more of of a wispy appearance, especially those closer up. So for this, I will use one of the dreaded tools of <laughs> any uh, of uh, a digital artist, and I don't don't say that I am one. But before before that, I will just use uh, this brush here. Just let me show you here with white how the brush looks. So it's it's very. It's a little bit wispy and this is usually my uh, pencil brush and with this I just trace the outlines here of the clouds here in front. Just a little bit to make them more wispy but but for the other thing I will be using yeah the Comic Sans equivalent of, of digital artists. Things you shouldn't be using when you're doing things seriously but I'm not and this is completely fine because in the end all that matters is uh, the result and even more so that you're having fun. Okay, so this thing that I'm using is uh, the smudge finger or what's it called? The smudge tool. Um, uh, just just a quick uh, reminder of what it does. If you have here um, a line or something, then you can just smudge it around. And this is usually a telltale sign of of people not very familiar with Photoshop is that they just smudge stuff around until it looks okay when in fact you should be doing some proper cutouts or something. But yeah, for wispy clouds, it it's uh, surprisingly effective. If you just pull it out just a little and wiggle it around like so. And I hope you can see it. Uh, what's it doing and just break up here the silhouette to make it not as hard and defined as it is. I think there you can see it better and with Photoshop uh, it, it helps to have a beefy computer <laughs> because for some reason it's not that well implemented and no matter how how well your computer is doing. Sometimes it still lags a little. I think other tools like PaintShop Pro, I think 
do this a little bit better also with a simulation of different kinds of media like uh, watercolors for example or oil colors that colors can really feel like they blend together and even have i think nowadays we even have simulation there for bristles individual bristles and how how they pick up color and interact and so on and so forth okay so yeah this is one of the side effects you get there those kind of wiggly lines that you can't quite get rid of but like i said we probably will make them disappear <laughs> uh in oh sorry wrong color in 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 the darkness anyway okay it looks a little bit too uh too symmetrical doesn't it huh it's a little bit too symmetrical you know what i i use still this brush here or that you can see better let's make it white again it's still in this pencil brush here but i use it as an eraser and you do this uh you can of course just turn your stylus around because it has the eraser there on the back but of course this is the default eraser and it's much uh, easier if you want to keep working with the texture of your brush that you um, here at the very top where it says mode of the of the image usually the mode is set to normal or luminosity or anything but if you switch it over to clear where is it there it is clear then you yeah essentially just clear what you just did with your pencil so i'm going to clear here now this tendril there maybe maybe something something like this yeah i'm still not i'm sorry of course i have to switch it back if i to normal if i want to keep working on it yeah i'm still not quite sold on how the clouds look <laughs> but i think i think we we can go with this and to make it a little bit more oppressive, uh, this is a very simple trick. Uh, trick that I do is have some clouds here just to the very top, that it feels like you're somehow still constrained. You, you there's no clear sky above you. You're either if you're looking at this, you're either in some kind of cave perhaps, or it's just yeah, it's just that the clouds don't um, give you a, a, a psychological feeling of ease because they're just just occluding what's on top okay yeah so far so good maybe still add here some clouds there on the distance perhaps something like this there and with the smudge tool again like so yes this is it i think for our clouds background it's not a hundred percent as i would have enjoyed it or liked it to look but as uh, i think still it, it looks so far so good okay let's make a new layer just underneath the clouds and this is where my stars and i like to draw with the moon usually in the, in, the, in the image because it gives things this kind of very spacey atmospheric touch okay so i switch now over to i think i should go back to this this brush here let me show you no wrong color maybe i should be zooming in um, that you can really see it in the stream so this is will be my brush for the moon and the question is where to put it that it looks nice in the frame <coughs> excuse me in uh, yeah in the composition and i think uh, i will put it here somewhere right now of course it's it's way too big and blobby but i think just just that i know that if the moon goes there maybe i will have some stars like so and yeah or maybe we put the moon down here i think i think i would like this much better if it is closer to the horizon i don't know it it, it feels much more ominous in a way okay and to make the moon perfectly round <laughs> i use the default brush and just make a dot like this of course it doesn't work now with the color that we we have so i pick the color that is here brighter like so and put the moon oh i just opened <laughs> the calculator and put the moon uh, here or maybe 
even further. No, the wrong layer, still the wrong layer. Put it a little bit here to the side or even have it half the way halfway not half the way halfway occluded by the clouds i think i think this this looks looks ominous but you can see there's there's really nothing special about my style of painting it's just layering stuff on top and what doesn't work i just keep deleting so again it's it's not like <laughs> bob ross does where you always have to make some very serious decisions about where to go if you don't like it you just just move <laughs> Uh, move the layer away or, or just yeah try try over with undo that until it works okay so that the moon works there also in the style of our painting i just trace its outline with my brush just to break it up a little that uh, i'm not giving away that i was using a perfectly round circle and this looks more like how i would do things and to give it more of a definition there or a little bit more of interest because uh, one thing is that uh, once the sun has set there underneath the horizon there if you recall uh, it's impossible to have this full moon there even though it would look nice so it needs to be lit from uh, yeah, from below from the sun here and this is what I'm going to do now is just where do I have my clear brush there I'm just removing here the light on the side that's impossible to reach but I still keep a little hint as you can see here a little hint of this kind of corona to hint at at uh, that there may be something there and if you don't quite manage it um, that it, it's the right direction you can still turn it like like this so I think this this should look good okay and as for the stars make a new layer but it's pr in principle it's the same thing only that you just make dots so uh, the stars should probably be the brightest thing here and I don't want them to be perfectly white but instead I give them this this almost a little bit of a blue just just a very very subtle blue touch so why don't I see anything? <laughs> um, huh? Is it is it the wrong brush that I have, or am I am I on the wrong layer? Ah, oh, damn it! What did I do again? Of course, yeah. Um, right. My brush was still set to clear. Of course, then <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. So star shapes. Where is it? Bright blue and just just a dot here and there. You don't want to overdo it with stars. Unless of course you want to draw something like the Milky Way there. But with stars uh, they have a tendency to clump together. So if you want to make a star field it's it's better in, instead of just placing uh, the dots of the stars just randomly just to have some kind of uh, uh, yeah clumps in a sense and uh, where the density of stars is, is higher and nothing there in between so just just to break it up a little and uh, it even looks looks more realistic in a sense so you know what I will be going here with this kind of Milky Way there uh, I hope no astronomer is watching this because <laughs> of my head haphazard way of, of placing stars uh, incidentally I shouldn't be doing it like this because I have a certain uh, a preset of scatter brushes like this so I think I'll be using those here for this kind of Milky Way and pretty much we're done <laughs> yeah cool okay so I think this is it for the background but what to put in front and like I said if I don't know uh, how to draw something uh, I just leave it in the shadows <laughs> and uh, but but for now we I just need to get some feeling of the lay of the land there that I'm going to depict is it I don't know are we on a mountain looking looking down and we can really see here now the horizon and maybe some kind of water perhaps or are we looking up from somewhere from maybe a hole I don't know from a cave 
So uh, for this, uh, I just I just fumble, which means <laughs> I just pick a, a brush like uh, the default brush again with this oval shape there and just try to draw in something there on its own layer and try to see uh, what what could stick and what not. So uh, let's try here with a little bit of a mountain range there on one side. Could this work maybe perhaps if it if it transitions over there into the into the clouds maybe but it, it feels too now here we're in some kind of valley and looking into the distance with all those uh, mountain shapes there i think this feels uh too too little distressing actually <laughs> um just don't put the hi stars behind the shadowy part of the moon yeah you see this so often you see this so often um that someone or some star fields where you have planets that look like this and then you get uh, i don't know a star that is perhaps sorry wrong color you get some stars which is fine but sometimes you see stars there and this, this is of course impossible because the whole thing is that this part is blocked because it's still around planet but yeah it's it's, it's funny because you really see this uh, t tend to see this quite often or at least I, I seem to notice it more often than <laughs> than other people do. So okay, I, I still want here some more, some brighter stars in there somewhere, just like this. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really putting myself in a tough spot there with how I laid out the Milky Way there <laughs> because it's, it's probably utterly wrong. Okay, uh, let's return uh, here. Where, did I paint this on its own layer? No, what did I do there? I don't know. Yeah, let, let's try to continue here with finding what our actual foreground is, right? The other thing that I could try um, maybe is some kind of very quick and crude here. I'm Like I said, I'm just trying things out. Some kind of, uh, yeah, uh, dead trees or yeah, I don't know how to call it. <laughs> Some kind of uh, uh, yeah dilapidated uh, structures there. But of course now um, it doesn't feel like the perspective works here. But I, I like how those things are protruding and and uh, occluding here here the moon. But maybe it's it's just too too busy on this one side. And of course you can't have everything that's that's just dark. Okay, so um, I will try now to um, maybe have something like this here. Um, I'm just, I'm just, uh, uh, yeah, trying things out. Like here, this little, little lake, perhaps. There's an island in the lake there with a happy little corpse, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, again, this looks okay. Maybe it's a little bit too dark. You know what? I add a new adjustment layer just to brighten things up that you can prop properly see there on the stream, something like this. So uh, it it looks quite okay, but but still doesn't have this this kind of oppressive feel that I would would enjoy it to have actually. Hmm. Or I, I turn down now my adjustment layer again or just have it completely flat and then work something in there maybe maybe just something there in the foreground because now it looks like some kind of yeah desolate desert scene like like this here i think i think you know what i think i will go with this but um still want to keep things open for me so i don't know what here to put in the distance so i will just put strange things here which i don't quite myself understand what those are are those structures is this a city are those ruins are those strange mountains let's put here some kind of tower in here who knows who knows but uh, for some reason i kind of like how this looks maybe maybe have some more structures like or, or tall buildings are those buildings but some of them are a little bit crooked so maybe it could be some kind of yeah abandoned city desolate city 
something along along those lines. But right now it's it looks a little bit too symmetrical in a sense. So I will just get rid of some some of those here or most of them and instead here hint a little bit at some more geography just some rolling hills there because uh, even with skylines you don't have that many buildings there that are individually that you can make out individually what they actually are so yeah as you can see well let, let's zoom in a little bit uh, as you can see it's with me it's always a back and forth and a lot of, of uh, undo <laughs> Is this is this looming? Is this creepy? I don't know. Frankly, I don't know. Just make sure that there aren't any floating platforms like this or <laughs> sooner or later you will have an Italian plumber jumping around them. Okay, so uh, yeah, for now I just I just keep it like it is here. Maybe don't have that many buildings there or that tall buildings so that this one here Whatever this is stands out a little. And oh, you know what we could do to make this a little bit more mysterious and ominous? Have some pyramids in there. Because pyramids are always nice. Oh no, wrong, wrong layer, the, the classic. Pyramids are always nice because you never, you never know what, what they actually mean. Uh, are those burial sites or not, or or do they hint at as is the classic of uh, a long forgotten uh, uh, civilization? You never know. And having some kind of pyramid in there is the cheap and easy way to make something look huh, familiar but still yet mysterious. Don't want them too pointy. Maybe this one is already a little bit worn, but yeah, you, you, let's have a look at it from afar. You really can't quite see what it is actually and this is what I like. So okay, now we got a lot here uh, going for our background. But since everything or right now a lot of it is very dark, maybe I, I could work some more on the clouds perhaps. Maybe have some more clouds in this direction. But yeah, getting carried away now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, when everything is dark, of course, it's it's not very interesting. And I'm always a big fan of having, let's brighten it up, of having some kind of very strong uh, light source, but uh, that's either so strong that you that it, uh, it blows out everything else. For example, like, uh, let me just sketch it. Maybe we will keep it uh, a light source like Let's put one here that is so strong or such strong that um, it's not just a, a bright blob here, but essentially that it just burns <laughs> burns you a, a hole in your retina because it's just so bright and you really can't see what's behind it. This is one thing that I like. Uh, it's, this is more like the, the lens flare approach, but I think for this it probably won't work maybe make a, make a very small one and the other thing that i like is having very intense colored lights but uh, that uh, are shining at such an angle that uh, it's more shadows than really definition what you can see so um but what should it illuminate well i don't know <laughs> again but uh, I, again i i pick here my favorite oval brush here and what's a mysterious color? What's a mysterious color? It's this greenish, greenish cyan, something, something like this, right? This already gives it some kind of mysterious feel. Okay, so I make it really small here and just, and just paint something there. I don't know what it is. I'm just, I'm just drawing shapes here and see if anything in this uh, speaks to me. <laughs> In one way or the other and that I can I can see or, or yeah interpret something into it that actually isn't there looks for some reason now that I'm making some kind of tree here I put it here but I but I already did this before I posted a, a picture uh, uh, I made on Twitter a couple of weeks back where there was also this this strange tree growing and at its foot was some kind of spilled chemical you never know what it was you know I don't like this <laughs> okay the other thing that we could do uh, I'm just thinking of it is maybe there's a, just a huge 
hule, a, a huge hole in the ground. Some, something like this. And there's something down there and maybe even even uh, yeah have it uh, give it give it a little bit more story in, in a sense. So I'm just checking against uh, my overall composition here and if there is a hole, maybe have it like this otherwise it wouldn't I don't think it would quite work here with a perspective. but if this is a round hole, perhaps this could work. Okay, um, la of course, um, I don't like how sharp it is and it's just it's just a single color right now. So let's do something about it. And I'll pick here my rough pencil again, this one here. And undo, undo, right. And just make its outer borders a little bit less perfect because I'm trying to to convince people that yeah I drew this all by hand <laughs> and this wasn't perfect Photoshop thing and of course have it why doesn't it work here with clear anymore why doesn't it work oh, of course yeah <sighs> wrong layer I think there is this drinking game among digital artists where it says always drink when you realize that you painted on the wrong layer so cheers everyone Okay, so this hole here in the ground, I, I, I like this idea. Of course, now it's it's still too uniform, but I like here that it has some kind of foreground and background going on. You know what? I lock now its uh, transparency, which means that uh, with whatever color or brush I paint this, that I'm only painting inside of it. And to make it a bit more ominous, of course, I, yeah, this is, turn down the opacity there of our brush so that it feels like there's uh, something inside there that's glowing and lighting or illuminating upwards whatever there is inside so something like this so that it feels like this is kind of a shaft or something i still don't know what material this is but but I think I think I like how this is coming along. So of course we now we want to have some more information. For example, is it a clear cut hole just just through the earth or something, or does is it is it maybe constructed in some in some sense or not? And for this, yeah, I will just zoom in, and you can see here if I just draw with uh, the opacity, well, not quite that down, but but something like this, just some shapes in here. From afar, it looks like there is something going on here. I'm, I don't like what is going on here. Oh God, wrong, wrong, wrong. Everything is wrong. <laughs> you know what, I undo this now here and that I don't mess up the hole that I have. I just make a new layer, but also uh, constrain it to, to the same uh, ranges so that when I'm painting that it doesn't spill over outside. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I want this here to have some kind of of rougher edges or well, yeah, that it it just feels that it has has some kind of texture. And for this, I'm just trying out now various brushes here and breaking up here this uniformity and just just seeing how things are. And if there are spots something that I like, I just keep painting over it until it has some some certain property or appeal that I just keep want to keep expanding. So I'm not quite happy with how this turns out. So I just pick here some color from underneath and draw on top of it just yeah to, to break it up a little bit. But you really can't quite tell what this is supposed to be. So this is very amateurish. So if I turn down now here the opacity, it definitely improves the whole thing. <laughs> so um, let's have a look at the chat. Oh, the theme selection isn't done yet. Should be part of the moon floating islands. Everyone should have easy alliterative greetings. I think so too. 
I think so too. It's, it's great to have a greeting and if people say hello and you can answer with something like sublime the pleasures my dear friend it's <laughs> it's always sticks with them <laughs> so um yeah I, I i think this gives it some kind of weird alien thing but the next thing that i want is that we can put it into proportion perhaps you know what i will just keep with how it is right now and as for proportions, it's always helpful to have some kind of uh, human shape, perhaps. I'm horrible at drawing humans. So uh, if, if we have some here, someone, let's say we have someone standing here on the edge, looking down. This is how I draw a person. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> this, this isn't a person but I still want to have some way of, of showing the scale of this thing. So yeah, I, I'll try to keep it very, very uh, subtle and yeah, um, hidden in darkness essentially. For, for our purposes now here, I just turn up um, with the uh, uh, adjustment layer that the brightness that we can see what the hell am I, I am drawing anyway <laughs> and of course, yeah, now now it messes with my uh, brightness selection. Let me just turn this off. Sample, all layers, no adjustments. There we go. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, there was this also, there's also this one trick of uh, how to convince scale in a, or how to, to convey scale is by a person, uh, of course, but uh, what makes them usually an adventurer is that they, in, in some in some way, just always carry a stick <laughs> with them. Maybe something something like this, that you know that they are adventurers. But right now, yeah, I, I don't I don't think that this looks even closely like a person. I will leave it out for now and instead try uh, things differently. Perhaps we can also have some kind of tree there. Because with trees, I'm, it's much easier for me. For example, here we have a, a tree trunk there. Just pick a different brush there and some branches extending upwards there. I'm, I'm just sketching really, I'm just sketching. And maybe have some of those roots of the tree reach into this abysmal broth brew or what you want to call it. I think maybe maybe something like this would be nice. And yeah, I think this is in terms of concept coming along actually. Um, I could see a rope ladder in there as well. Just random ideas. Yeah, I, I like this. Uh, maybe maybe have something from from this tree branch uh, reach down. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe a rope going down. So there's, there's this little story of who put this there, who put, put a rope there and apparently went down or, or not <laughs> something, uh, something along those lines. Okay. So I, I would say it's settled. Let's keep working on this tree. So I zoom out now to see here, uh, the whole composition at once that I can decide where to put the tree. Okay. For, uh, sketching purposes, I pick my pencil this thing here that is really sharp edges and am i on a new layer yes <laughs> and i'm just sketching here where my tree where i want my tree to go maybe it's very gnarled and old like like so and this is probably uh not out in the open somewhere maybe this is a little bit hidden so we could have some kind of yeah of brushes or undergrowth uh, around the tree or as well um, the foreground as well so as for the tree this yeah this is very this is a very ugly tree <laughs> i like that it how it looks like like a hand in, in some way maybe maybe it's even even too much of a hand right now but maybe maybe this is good that you can't quite um, tell if it is it a hand is it supposed to be a hand what actually is it is it really a tree and I like this ambiguity 
uh, when when I managed to pull it off. <laughs> okay, so um, let's have here some kind of roots break through down here. It's really it's really just a, just a sketch right now. And get rid of anything else that doesn't quite look look right. Um, yeah, and of course uh, now here this outline doesn't quite work because where is this illumination coming from here? You can only have uh, things uh, that are being illuminated from below, right? So um, the trunk probably not as much, maybe, just maybe. This was way too strong. <laughs> maybe hint at it with a little bit of the sky color something like this but the opacity is way too strong so that uh, at, like i said that we just give it a vague kind of outline and yeah let's get rid of anything that's green here oh this was the tree already yeah you know what i will go with this and keep at it trying to make this tree even more yeah strange in a sense so I, I i don't like when the branches are too straight in a sense uh that they always take bends and turns at, at odd angles or directions so that you can really give give this thing some kind of character okay so now here for these roots reaching down here those of course need to have some kind of of light coming coming at them from from below and maybe maybe there's something they are twisted and, and going down like like so okay good so let's give them some hint of silhouette if they are being actually illuminated from from the bottom ah oh, man i really shouldn't have have uh, uh, picked this kind of <laughs> of uh, yeah light source because it's it's making things much harder for me than necessary. <laughs> Maybe we will add another light source just outside because I don't think I can pull this off, frankly. That it still looks looks like a tree, and whose whose trunk is reaching reaching down there. I mean now if if I'm using those helper lines here. Of course, it's it's somewhat it makes somewhat sense, but yeah, I make it make it a little bit bit brighter still, so that you can see <laughs> um, how this thing looks. And like I said, I'm I'm not quite happy. Actually, I'm not really happy with how this looks. It looks like a children's drawing, <laughs> the, especially especially the tree. Hmm. You know what? For now, I will just scrap the tree. And try something else like I said uh, I wanted to have uh, to give it this kind of that it's a little bit hidden somewhere so it can't be in plain sight of the city in the background so where are my scattered brushes there they are but um, this is yeah this looks good uh, yeah, I wanted to to hide it a little bit uh, behind some kind of uh, what what's the term foliage foliage I think foliage um, yeah leaves of trees and and yeah shrubbery perhaps and yeah ju just some just some um, maybe still pick a different brush um, like this yeah yeah just just some some plants essentially so that this looks like. Uh, looks like it was closely uh, to to a, maybe maybe a, a plane of grass somewhere. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not quite sure, but this is a journey, and the good thing is that this already gives it some kind of depth in a sense. So maybe I should zoom in a little bit that you can see it better. So yeah, just a few tufts of grass there on the outside so that it looks looks a bit more hidden maybe have some of those grasses give it some kind of i don't know flavor in a sense or that some 
people who are dealing <laughs> with plants can hint uh, or, or at least can can see oh the, this is hinting at some i don't know a north american ragweed or whatever <laughs> yeah just just to give this this grass here some some character and as soon as it goes here around the corner corner around the corner this this bend here then i pick up the color from underneath there that it, it looks like the, the grass that's that's growing there is getting it illuminated there from yeah from the pit essentially and it's it's tricky that it's not too sparse on one hand but also not too bright there on the other hand that it looks like yeah like I was overdoing it that the artist themselves was a little bit overzealous <laughs> there yeah and this is in a nutshell my process right it's uh, uh to reiterate just starting there with the background and the overall composition and then just just seeing or trying to see where where things might be going and then just iterating over them so yeah it's, it's like it's like making an indie game <laughs> Right, you start with something that inspires you, and then you build the first basic systems, and then you realize how much uh, work there still is in in some parts, and other things that you completely overlooked, and then uh, halfway you really have <laughs> to, to take a step back and and look at it again and and see, yeah, where things aren't coming together properly, and then of course you have to to improvise. So let's step back here and I really like how this is looking actually. It looks like a little bit like a pond, right? So I will add some more hints of grass on this side here. Ah, it's still too bright, right? So I, I hope I'm not boring you here with my tentative drawing. Like I said, I'm not a Bob Ross that can put down some serious decisions and then just put a palette knife on top of something and call it the shadowy part of a mountain and it looks great. <laughs> so yeah, that, it's not too much. Maybe, maybe there is even some kind of pathway leaving up there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure, not quite sure. So there is just grass on, on the outside here. And not so much there on the inside. I turn off now the adjustment layer so you can see uh, this is how I like it. That is, it's really dark and you really have to pay close attention and turn up your screen brightness in the hopes that you see just, just enough there. But again, it's not hinting uh, uh, enough at, at certain things that I, I wanted to hint at. Uh, I have this, this notion of, of this Lovecraftian horror thingy that I want to... to just just hint at, at things that are bigger or more more f threatening that feel more threatening than than you can see at first glance um coming back to my previous paintings f not so much this one but perhaps this one here if you can see it especially at a lower brightness you probably know or not it, it was i think it was this year this is very very subtle so you can see just this thing here with those blue red dots and just something growing but if you keep following this and maybe you can see it here it just keeps growing and growing and growing and is actually much taller than uh this this car here so whatever is growing out there there is something there in the darkness hidden just just barely out of sight and you if you see it it's it's too late right so this, this I, I want something like this also in, in this little painting here. Uh, one thing that I just uh, uh, thought of was add some kind of, of fantastic, of impossible, and maybe have something float there on top of this thing. Whatever it is, I don't know. I'm just drawing something here. maybe give it a shape like this i'm not quite sure and now i'm using this this ugly smudge tool here just to see if anything if i can <laughs> uh, interpret anything into this uh, thing here but uh, yeah with the smudge tool since now it's lacking a, a silhouette of some kind 
Huh. Or maybe maybe just just a simple shape here. Maybe yeah. Let, let, let's try something like this here. Just some geometric shape there. Huh. Yeah. Well, now it doesn't work with the light source again. Ah, man. Now I pick up here the light of the sky and try just really just testing to see if this could work here. But hmm, yeah, still literally <laughs> in a sense painted myself in into a corner. Huh. Still not quite sure, but uh, what I can do if, if I'm stumped like this usually is try to give it a bit more atmosphere uh, by introducing some kind of haze or fog. And this is what I will be doing now. And maybe, maybe things start to click from there. So here for the background, I will just add this ground haze here so that the city here or those ruins or whatever this is is hidden behind this this bank here of of clouds. Yeah, it's it's hard not to overdo it, <laughs> and I think I've barely scratched it because with uh, with this haze and smoke, it sometimes it's really helpful uh, if you want to uh, emphasize or put some more emphasis on silhouettes because the story or well the meaning is everything here is black. But since we have this fog here, you could possibly read uh, much better the silhouette of this tree against it. So this is sometimes why, especially in, in horror movies where they have zombies, this big army of zombies against the silhouette. Well, how do you show a big army of something coming at you in the night? Yeah, you put a light behind them and maybe just some fog that you can only see the silhouettes. And this is, yeah, if you, uh, I think even Left 4 Dead uses, uses this trick. <laughs> of putting putting fog in there. And since it's a foggy day and there must be some fog also clinging to this hole here, right? Because it's probably much brighter than you would think it is. Like so. And now we can of course see much more here of the foreground. It, it looks a little bit grainy because of this brush that I stretched way beyond <laughs> what it was made for. So I, I, I just blur this again here just to get rid of this, this, uh, yeah, this grainy brush effect. And maybe also here uh, on the background. Yeah, like, like this. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit too misty actually. <laughs> I will zoom in again and, and try to reduce here now this, this background fog. Maybe it's just a little bit too background foggy. And also now here our foreground fog, even if I turn down the light, it's it's a bit too strong. But I think I think this is, is helping us get somewhere. Because now for the foreground, I will try to, mm, I don't know, have some kind of of framing here. Let's pick my pencil here, this one. And now I will just draw here something like this, like some kind of twigs maybe in the foreground that, again, this is just a sketch right now, just something that feels like, yeah, we, 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 we are watching or looking at something that we probably shouldn't be seeing. And on this side here to, to frame it even more, I don't know why, but uh, let's put, put this kind of tree silhouette here. Maybe something, something like this dead tree here. Okay, I think I can still see some issues of course here with this painting, but I think this little little ugly tree here, if it is actually a tree. Uh, branches only get uh, uh, thinner the further from, from the main uh, stem you go. Otherwise it can do 
two things, it look either wrong or it gives you some kind of unease. And yeah, I, I really want want to have two kinds uh, uh, of, I, I don't want it to look wrong in a sense, but still I want it to look a little bit weird and, and yeah, unsettling, unsettling. I think that's the word. Okay, so this I like. Maybe uh, the, the problem that I have now, uh, uh, brighten it up again, is that um, there is no differentiation between this uh, uh, tree trunk here or this branch of the tree, let's get rid of this one, and the clouds uh, behind them. So one option would be to make the clouds brighter or the, um, the tree darker in a sense, but I think I will just go for um, making it a bit more foggy. <laughs> Like so. so, I turn down now my brightness again. So, okay, now I think now this works that it barely reads against the clouds. I don't like now how the moon or where the moon is positioned, maybe position it directly on top of the pyramid, you know, creepy stuff and, and things. <laughs> and uh, the clouds themselves, they are too far ahead, I think, so if I pull them down a little like so perhaps yeah maybe not something like this I don't know frankly I don't know but of course the big cloud here on top needs to stay on top uh, like this what I like now about this uh, image uh, in general is that we have uh, three colors the blue of the sky here, the red of, of the dusk and this green, whatever this is here. What I don't like about it is that we have still this big space here where nothing happens. And if we brighten it up, it's, it's plainly obvious that there is just nothing, nothing there. So um, I will continue now here with this foreground thing. I don't know what I will draw here. And then I will try to find some kind of things that we put down just just behind um, this this big hole here. Because as you've seen, I'm, I'm horrible with people <laughs> drawing, drawing uh, people and figures there. So everything needs to go uh, into the shadows in some way or the other. OK, so those are pointy sticks. What for? Well, probably for something to guard the people uh, that are on our side as we are watching this to guard it against whatever is coming from this hole here, right? But uh, yeah, with this big fog here, it's like I said, the, I, I like how, how the fog helps us uh, uh, get some more depth into this. But again, it also uh, makes things visible that shouldn't have been visible, like this whole void thing <laughs> that's, that's behind it. So I think I will do um, what I did before and just draw something and see if this, if I can make it work somehow. Okay, I'm just putting down random blobs here and hmm, could this be some kind of, of village? Well, not really. Maybe is there any, any, some kind of machinery there? Hmm. Or if we put it in front of the fog, then of course it lacks this, this kind of, of perspective stacking. Or if I get rid of it completely and where do we have our grass here? Maybe this thing is uh, on the outskirts of some kind of lake maybe and there's just this whole uh okay there we go yeah just just a bunch of of reeds maybe they're growing around it this can't be wholesome whatever grows there so like we had here with with the tree our first idea of the tree maybe just something that grows out of it that's completely unhealthy. Okay, so I'm laying down now here the first, you know what, I shouldn't be doing here the first row of reeds. I just make this darker here. 
so that it goes in the back. And you want to start, uh, especially with this kind of, of uh, drawing here, you want to start from the back and make your way uh, to the front. So there is my glow. What if I put it like so? Yeah. So that it really has this this feeling that it the yeah the lighting the light that comes there from from this from the pit here uh, gets uh, uh, diffused by uh, all these things that are growing here in the foreground. And now here just the frontmost things that are growing here look like this, perhaps. Uh, they're still too regular. Maybe I should have changed brushes or directions. But yeah, I, I'm not quite quite sure with how how to go on from here. And this is also uh, another uh, case study of why you usually should work with some kind of references. Um, I'm not talking about uh, a painting or just copying someone else's painting entirely but instead references like yeah photographs or anything else because right now i have no idea <laughs> of what i want in this uh, section here but if we zoom out again i think it looks barely barely <laughs> enough um, for a little speed painting maybe add here some more reads here or whatever this kind of growth is to the front so now it, it doesn't look so much like a hole any longer but more like some kind of puddle or like i said some kind of lake or pond so just laying down here a variety of colors so that it that it doesn't look too similar right yeah, not my best painting, frankly, <laughs> not my best painting. But one thing that I can do now is what I really like <laughs> is lighting. And since we have this branch here in front and now the, the story of this painting is that the light is coming here from below. It probably illuminates this side here. So let's Give this here some kind of fringe there. Like so, but not too much. And now I'm doing the coward's way out of using this smudge tool here, which like I said, you really shouldn't be doing if you want to do things <laughs> uh, properly. But now if I make if, if i make my my brush now really really small and tiny you can uh, have hard very hard details there but as soon as you zoom out just a little bit they blend together and um yeah it, it looks it looks like there is some kind of gradient or diffusion going on while uh, essentially it's just very fine brush strokes if i zoom in now you can really you can see here that those are very fine strokes uh, but the problem here is, of course, they don't quite work well uh, with the overall sketchiness of, of this kind of branch. But this is usually good to get or uh, simulate some kind of texture in the uh, surface going on. Like here, that this should be some kind of uh, ragged wood. Okay, so I think... For now, this is probably too strong. If I turn out down now my brightness, yeah, it will probably not be this thick, this fringe here. So let's just let's just get rid of most of it. This is another problem that I have when I'm doing this kind of light fringes. I go most of the time just way overboard. <laughs> but yeah, I think this uh, is let's save it i don't think that this will get much better <laughs> unless i'm doing a complete redraw of this still don't like uh, the position of the moon maybe put it here 
somewhere or all together up here perhaps or like so <coughs> it doesn't flow uh, the composition doesn't quite flow because there uh, yeah it looks like there is not a clear idea behind it and as you've seen from my process there hardly is one but uh, for big uh, big speed paintings for speed paintings or, or just some kind of concepts or clear clearing your head if you want if you have some kind of idea of, of something and you really just want to get something out instead of having just to stare at a blank canvas all of the day it's, it's just a good thing as you've seen just start drawing something and try to see something in there that is not there and of course like i said you could always use references okay i think uh like i said i think i won't be touching this any longer but um and it's also not my best painting mostly due to my lack of of our artistry but i hope this uh, little stream showed you that it's it's really it's, it's no magic behind this you don't have to be blessed by the spirit of michelangelo at birth uh to become a great painter but in my case of course it would have helped it would have helped the thing is uh, that you feel uh, to have fun and to make that you feel you have fun and that you also feel to make some kind of progress for example like i said i don't know what this is but it looks inspiring that maybe i do something with this strange pond that's at the outskirts of some city perhaps where things are glowing at night and strange plants are growing that shouldn't be something along those lines so what I, th I think uh, one thing that is missing, like I said, is just this kind of dread in this painting. Maybe it's, uh, uh, it, it can be anything actually uh, to, to make something dreadful. You don't have to have some kind of big monster there. For example, what would also be dreadful in a sense would be just imagine if there is just uh, one shoe. You would instantly question, why is there just one shoe? Did someone put out two of their feet and stuck them in there and yeah but or something happened that they lost one shoe along those lines so yeah i, th I think this is where uh, these kind of quick concept paintings can help you with something you're struggling if you just sit down and try to paint it doesn't have to be good to to quote mr rogers here uh, uh you don't have to be a great artist uh, it's it's the whole process uh, that you're having fun and enjoying things and learning things about your creativity Okay, um, let's have a look at the chat and see how many people are still there. Oh, I've lost quite a few. <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm, I'm not a digital painter, so this is quite uh, to be expected. Um, the chat says, have you considered starting LD with a session like this after you learn the theme? Maybe it helps to distill out an idea with the same uh, time getting the cover art. Oh, okay, this, this could be interesting. But the problem with uh, that I have with Ludum Dare themes is uh, that uh, their themes aren't as evocative that you could paint something. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to, to uh, usually when, when you start to draw, it's, it's more like you have sketches for actual game mechanics. For example, there was this horrible theme, two buttons. I could draw two buttons sitting there, chilling at the side of this cesspool that's glowing uh, i don't know this is like i said this is the problem with ludum dar or you are the monster yeah maybe if, if you're good at creature designs yeah i, I don't think the, the probably uh, my, i think i'm getting to is probably depends on the theme right <laughs> but the good thing is that uh i changed up uh, my process a little bit that i start at least thinking about uh, what theme or, or all of the themes that I start thinking about actual mechanics or implementations or something. But since Ludum Dara will be happening in October, of course, I will be looking to make something spooky. Maybe this, probably not this, but yeah, so, something something along the lines of the cellar. For some reason, I don't know, this this creepy, spooky Lovecraftian stuff really sits, sits well with me. <laughs> I agree that this image isn't dreadful. Well, it it's not as dreadful as, well, in some... Yeah, I, I get what you mean. <laughs> LG themes are always terrible. Oh yes, they are. And I think it's uh, if if you get uh, an LD theme that's not shit, you're actually really surprised and don't know what <laughs> what to do because for some people, uh, I think they already have 
like 80 or let's say 70 percent already an idea that they want to do and just kind of shoehorn the theme in and with some Ludum Dara themes this is really easy and for other things it's like yeah you, you really can't shoehorn in something such as two button controls on the other hand if 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 the theme is way too out there and you could interpret pretty much anything into it then it it wouldn't be fun so i think with the themes the hardest part for uh, submitting a good theme is picking one which you think is good but at the same time that sounds ludum dare y enough that it might get picked and i think this is the problem that my themes uh, don't survive i think i think even the theme slaughter they just don't survive it because people go for the ludum dare y themes <laughs> But I mean, this is all good. This is Ludum Dara and this is what we're here for. And there are other gems which have more sensible themes. But since I'm so much behind with my Ludum Dara documentaries, I don't even dare to think about participating in other gems. Because when I do, people probably will ask me, hey, do you have a video of this? And I will say, no, then yeah, but why not? And I think, yeah, probably because it's too much work. And I think this is why I'm still holding out on participating in more jams right now, at least because I, I want to get things in order and do one thing after the other. And like I said, right now I have this new video that will be coming out summer this week and it feels dirty working on a video. If you know, there's this huge big thing that you still haven't finished and that is still so much work and then starting and finishing a completely different video and just like 50 hours of work actually it, it feels like yeah it, it, it feels like you're giving up on something but of course you, you don't yeah it, it's strange like i said with my creativity i'm having usually it's it's, it's strange up ups and downs <laughs> hang on is this the guy who made scully yes i i'm the guy who made scully and i i want if, if you ever ever have a look at the source code i want to apologize <laughs> Uh, I think I remember asking a question a while back on Tumblr about making it open source. Oh yes, it is open source actually. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure if, if it caught on. Just let me, let me, oh. Of course, uh, other quick tip, if you have your <laughs> stylus uh, and you put it down on the tablet and then your mouse won't work, this is the reason why your mouse won't work. Uh, oh yeah, this is the Instagram page of Simon Stollenhag and as you can see his photos look very much like his paintings unless there are some paintings in there which I don't I don't think there are but but they look look uh, pretty much alike. Okay, if you go to pixelprophecy.com/stuff Okay, I mistyped my own domain. Way to go. There we go. Let's make this huge. And you can find uh, under this very clunky <laughs> implementation here uh, of Joomla. Is it Joomla? I think it is Joomla. You can find here uh, tools and then its sources with this nice Bible icon. And there you can find uh, the uh, WPF C sharp form of Scully. And again, apologies. If you spot any bugs or inconsistencies, you can keep them all. And I made this, I think I made this open source so that people can laugh at my source code and make this thing more robust. Because right now it doesn't even have a scroll bar uh, because this is intentional because I never intended to, to have it that you could write much longer stuff in there. But it would, probably would have helped if I told people outright that they could hit Control S to save <laughs> their work. Also, uh, Scully will will uh, complain that you didn't save your work if you didn't put anything in there. Yeah, it's a mess. But but still, thank you so much for for still using Scully. <laughs> shoehorn a shoehorn, lol. <laughs> uh, I don't know what what, what I'm saying. I think uh, since it's getting late and the caffeine is wearing off a little bit and i'm getting <coughs> a bit husky i think i will call it a day for today so let's let's have a look at this magnificent uh, not dreadful enough but still in some way dreadful painting and thank you uh, so much for partaking uh, let's have a last look at the chat if there are any things that you would like to know or uh, uh, how you can order this print on a t-shirt uh, uh spoiler alert you you you, you can't 
But yeah, uh, the purpose of, of today's uh, stream was more or less just trying to make something, even if you haven't painted. Just just try to sit down. Today's are so many. There are so many tools for for your phone or just something. And uh, like I said, if you keep it very dark and only show what what works, you can pretty much inspire yourself for for something. Okay, I don't think there is anything more on the chat. So yeah, usually uh, uh, I've been talking much longer in my streams, but I think it's 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 good that this one is a little bit shorter. So for next week's stream, I don't have quite the idea. It depends on what I'm up to uh, in the week. Uh, it's still going to be a little bit stressful at work, but I think I will manage to do one or uh, one thing or another that's related to game dev at last. Man, sometimes uh, when you, when you're really inspired and you can't work on something or you can't get started with something, it 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 really sucks because uh, you keep carrying this this thing that you I have this idea and I really want to put it down and just. Uh, yeah play around with it for eight hours and make a prototype and you can't because you don't have the time and then a couple of weeks later you have and you just hate it it's, it's like i really don't want to try this and this is how you find out that um something isn't as inspiring or an idea isn't as promising as you thought it first was because you just have to give yourself time and digest it and, and mull it over and to really think yeah is this really something that i would be would enjoy working on at least for eight hours to get a basic prototype out. <clears throat> uh, Krita is great for painting as well. Never heard of it, but if you have any other uh, suggestions, please put it in the chat or as a comment to this thing here so that people can find out. I'm uh, more or less cursed with Photoshop because I've been using it for, I think it's now 20 years. And since then I, I never tried out anything else. I tried out GIMP and people say, yeah, use GIMP. It's much better than Photoshop. And there is this, <laughs> this nasty joke that goes, this is exactly what people say that never have used Photoshop nor GIMP. <laughs> so, but yeah, whatever works for you. I think there are even some um, freeware painting programs out there. And in the end, I mean, we're all developers on some way. You can always make your own. All right, there was one thing in terms of uh, trying to get paintings out in a sense that I really enjoyed a lot. Where is it? There it is. Oh man, this is small. I try now to zoom in here a little bit if I manage to. Um, try to make this bigger. Okay, transition time. Yes, it works. So here we have my Steam library and this game is called Passepartout, the Starving Artist. And you play an artist. Excuse me. And uh, the cool thing about this, you can really paint. This is a Unity game. Let me see if I can find some screenshots there because this is uh, uh, surprisingly deep in a sense uh, that I still don't have quite figured out how their algorithm works because you play, of course, as a starving artist. And uh, yeah, it's presented in this very, very cute little uh, 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 style. It's, it's like a, a puppeteering uh, theater in a sense. And this is the whole game. You start out as a starving artist and you draw something and certain group of people buys your paintings and while another group hates them. And depending on which path you go, you, you start to become more of a punk pop artist or more of a fine arts uh, 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 painter. And yeah, this thing is like, because you're on a timer in a sense that, yeah, the next month you need to pay your rent. So you need to sell some paintings. And yeah, it's really, it's really fun that you can just switch off your brain and, and start painting. And I, while I was researching this, I found here a, a bunch of, of my paintings, which I made screenshots of in, in this game. And I think this was just the first one or two evenings that I spent with this game and yeah it, you get a limited palette you got a limited amount of brushes and you can unlock brushes i think even even later in your uh, career but overall i, I, I really it, it, it was really fun just switch your brain off and, and paint things and yeah i think the algorithm works how how fast you move your brush how long you take per picture because at first i thought oh my god i'm getting so little money for 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 my pictures i need to keep making them faster and faster and yeah of course the punks loved it but of course the fine arts critics just just sneered at them and then i made a new run where i started very deliberately painting 
and it took me much longer but it sold for much more to a completely different crowd so yeah it's it's from a programming perspective it's it's i think it's really fun figuring out how how this works and yeah uh like i said i've, I've had a lot of fun with this and you can take screenshots uh, of all of your paintings and it's just switch off your mind play a game and paint at the same time Okay, um, let's have a final look at the chat. Sorry for being so late. Oh, no worries, no worries. I'm, I'm just lucky that there are still people <laughs> watching this. Again, I'm so grateful that uh, so many of you regularly step, uh, stop by to this random stream that I do because I think there are many people out there who make much better streams, but most of them are uh, concerned with Fortnite <laughs> strategy guides. <laughs> Okay, so let's have another look at the chat before saying goodbye uh, for this week at least, for real. Uh, there is a magnifying glass on my desk. Oh, you, you're watching my streams with a magnifying glass on your desk? That's old school, bro. Go for it. And yeah, it's this. Uh, hello, Red Hermit. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I'm sorry that uh, this uh, stream is pretty much over for now. But there will always be a next Sunday where I'll be streaming something else that has been occupying me the last week. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I, that I, I would love to show you what I've been doing this past week and the week before it, uh, but uh, <laughs> I've signed an NDA, so I really can't. But uh, the good good thing for you is that it doesn't really have to do anything with gaming. It, it's just more of compositing. And for visual effects, it might have been interesting, but but you're not missing much. I think this is this is the gist of it. Okay, so hmm, let's have a final look at the chat. <laughs> there may be other uses. <laughs> and yeah, again, thank you so much for stopping by and for spending your evening with me yapping in one of your browser tabs. So you're welcome. You can now get back to whatever you were doing before, which is probably more interesting than seeing me struggle with my speed painting. But nevertheless, do something that you enjoy, do something that you love, do something you're passionate about, it, you're passionate about and I will <clears throat> have another sip of water, try to clear my throat and yeah, God bless my friends, God bless. <laughs>